five persons you have been feeling discouraged depressed unhappy it is like the enemy has broken your age and you are now busy grumbling saying to people you don't know what I'm going through those 75 persons come out here I will pray for you that whatever age the enemy had broken shall be given back to you I didn't say everybody come 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 I didn't say everybody children no noise making pass me not O gentle say if you're here my humble cry while on others thou art calling to pass me attentive. If the power of God overwhelms anybody and flabbergasts anybody, don't let that person fall without you helping him or her. Father, you spoke to me about this early hours of this morning. That there are people who now feel naked. There are people who now feel abandoned. There are people, it's like every door has been shut against them. Even their prayers go up and come back empty. And Father, you promise me there are five of them particularly that you will reinstall their age. And that you fight their battles. Father, the hour has come. 
you know them and they have heard you let your power therefore be raised over them whatever was taken from them will be returned now Father, on my right hand side and my left hand side and in front of me, all those who have been crying and saying, God, how long shall this emptiness continue? How long shall I feel abandoned by you? Father, it is like every door has been shut against them. But now I demand that those doors be made open again. On my right hand side and my left hand side and in front of me, all those who have been saying in their heart, it's like God has abandoned me. But I know you have not abandoned anybody here. Therefore, arise and let their hate be rebuilt. Arise, let there be a restoration of what the enemy has taken from them. Arise. And let them feel your closeness and feel your presence and feel your power. And whatever was taken from them shall now be returned. Thou power of God, in the name of Jesus, move. Somebody help him. That's number one. Somebody help him. Help him. Father, there are three more. There are three more. Any hand fighting those three persons, let them now have victory over all opponents. And let them be set free. Be set free. Be set free. Be set free. Somebody help. That's number two. Somebody that's, help that's again. That's number four. Meaning one. Is that a woman? Let not the one in front of me here. The man. The man. Yes. Okay, let the man help you. Can we say to God, You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
everybody go back to your seats and bring out your Bible, your notebook, and your pen. We are going to learn great secrets of God. And I will ask God one more time. Whatever has been taken from you, be returned. Whatever made you feel empty, be filled. You will not go as you can. The Bible speaks of the Bible speaks of the spirit of his might. The Bible also speaks of different gifts God gives us as his people to help us become overcomers. Let's go to the book of Judges, chapter 15, we take verse 14 through 16. Samson could have been taken away by his enemies, but the spirit of God's might came upon him, beginning tonight. As you go through life, there are gifts God will give you. He will give you the spirit of wisdom. I don't know if you know what it means to have the spirit of wisdom upon your life. You are going to solve so many problems. You are going to answer so many questions. You will not be an ordinary person. He will also give you the spirit of wisdom and of understanding. And then he will give you the spirit of his might. As a child of God, you need that spirit of his mind. When the enemy attacks you and weakens you, you need God to step in and intervene and empower you and embolden you and come to your help. Yes, sir. Can you read? And when he came unto Lehi, the Philistine shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon the, him. That's what, hear that beautiful line. The Spirit of the Lord did what? Came, came upon with him. Might. With great might. When the enemy weakens you and attacks you, through the battles of your life, you need God also to step in and bless you with the spirit of his might. What does that mean? Read on, sir. And the cords that were upon his arms became as flax. The, that is, the rope they used to bind his hands became broken. Go on. And his bands loosed from off his hands. And the band they used to bind him loose off his hands. And he found the new jawbone of an ass. He find a jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand and grabbed that jawbone and took it and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. I want you to imagine that type of strength and energy that came upon Samson and he was able to destroy one thousand people. In your hour of need, in your hour of need, I want this God to bless you with the spirit of his might. We had a program in Gombe. We sang, we sang, we sang song, from, song after song, song after song. A woman who was blind fell under the anointing and her eyes opened. Her husband ran to me and hugged me and asked, what did you do? I have spent 20 years of the wealth I curated on this woman. And, and I couldn't return her sight. 
Now you have just raised an ordinary son, and here she is on the floor, her sight restored. What did you do? Who are you? Why they were asking me that question, Boko Haram boys came with their guns. They would aim at me and shoot, and the gun would just say, Boy, I will not trigger off. Two of them asked me, Can we follow you to you? That may teach you the secret behind this. No, I can give you money to come to you, but we'll never talk. We are enemies. Right where you're sitting now, I want. God to bless you with the spirit of his power. When the enemy has harassed you and weakened you, let God intervene and revive your strength. Have you stopped? You stopped where? 15. Huh? I stopped at verse 15. Okay. Let's go to the book of John. Chapter 4, verse 32. Jesus walked and overworked himself. But he remained strong. And the disciples began to query and question what happened. They asked, did anybody bring him food here? How come this man is so strong after many hours of preaching? Yes, sir. What did Jesus say? 432. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Go on. I have meat. Therefore, said the disciples one to another, Had any man brought him out to eat? Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Everybody expected him to become exhausted. But the spirit of his power was upon him and therefore he was still strong despite many hours of preaching and ministering to people all those who feel discouraged i want at the appropriate time i want god to feel you with the spirit of his power that you may overcome the enemy despite what he had done to humiliate you to stop your blessings. When your heart is broken, soon your body will be broken. But I want that whatever the enemy has taken from you be returned to you. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Let us, let us God has promised that the, the end of time Christians shall not be ordinary people. He will bless us with different gifts. And I want that those blessings God promised. This night is a good night to start claiming your own. Can you imagine what God, what it would do for you if God blesses you with the spirit of wisdom the spirit of understanding the spirit of knowledge you will not be an ordinary person anymore and this night I want something to begin to happen in your life let's rush back to chapter 8 I mean chapter 1 verse 8 of the book of Acts But ye shall receive power. Right where you are sitting now, God is talking to you. He says you will receive what? Power. After the Holy Ghost shall have come upon you. And there are many of us who have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but we don't seem to demonstrate the power of wisdom, the power of creativity, the power of imagination, the power of understanding. You cannot really demonstrate the power of God 
if you don't know the power you carry. Every time Satan attacks you, all you need to do is speak in tongues. You become conscious of the anointing of God upon you. You feel the courage and the boldness to confront whatever confronts you. You will be ready to be part of the battle of the day and of the hour. Everything the enemy shall do to discourage you, to frighten you, shall fail. Yeah. Shall fail. Yeah. Shall fail. Yeah. It pains me when I see people frightened by little witches and wizards. They start looking for a great man of God to pray for them. It's a lie. Just start speaking in tongues, you become conscious of the limitless ability God has placed upon you. No. That battle is not your battle, it's God's battle. Just let God know that the weapons he gave you, you are ready to use them. I was smuggling Bible to China repeatedly. One day, I was carrying 300 copies of the Bible. And they stopped me. I panicked. I was afraid because two Bibles will end you 20 years jail term. And to be jailed in a foreign land is a bad news. Father, and God said, don't father me. I gave you gifts. Use the gifts. Speak in tongue. What is it to speak in tongue? It is you calling for reinforcement from the commander in chief. There are so many of us who are greatly equipped by God, but we are afraid of the enemy. So I began to speak in tongue. I was pressing, pressing up and down. When they opened their machine, the machine had been crushed to pieces. They came back and asked me, are you a native doctor? So I was carrying such power, I didn't know. Father, you are wonderful. When a witch challenges you, just speak in tongue. God will speak to that witch and will talk to her. And will tell her who you are. I used to have an owl pitch on the tree in, in the center of our compound. Every time I travel out of Uyo, that that owl will return. This day, the owl came when I was around. My children said, Daddy, that owl, that owl has come back. Hey, let me talk to her. Madam, I know you. If you don't want trouble, pack your things out of this compound this night. And never you come back. It's now 40 years. She has not come back. Many of us have been endued with power, but we don't know. And we don't know the right time to fight. We don't even know what to do to start the battle. No. If God has called you and endued you with power, the Bible says, you, you will demonstrate the power of God as Jesus would. And this night, I declare you a great soldier. Already equipped by God. Yeah. Don't be afraid. What? Don't be afraid. There are, there are witches and wizards who will just frighten you and tell you what they can do. <clears throat> they can do what? Nothing. They can do what? Nothing. And I want to announce this night. In every battle you fight, you'll be more than a conqueror. Yeah. Can you raise up your hand and say, in every battle I shall fight in this life, I'll be more than a conqueror. I come from a royal family. Every royal family will have native doctors paid to protect them. But our own native doctors began to kill us. 
And that was about the time I gave my life to Christ. I came home to the village. That night, I slept and I saw a man bind my two legs. I was afraid. But God said to me, Mama, why are you afraid? Every weapon you need is already with you. Stand up and confront the man. I called out every man, every male in that compound to our compound hall. And I said to them, this man here tried to kill me last night. He has only one day more as a day of grace. Beginning today, if he tries again to kill me, he will die nine days, with nine times without dying. The man got up and said, Oma, hey, you're a rat. A rat? Yes, I'm a rat, but Jesus sits on my back. He asked, what, what does that mean? It means I am more powerful than you are. <laughs> you know, my grandmother heard what I said to this man and began to cry. She said, oh man, you're a rat. The man said, you're a rat, and you're a rat. This man is a lion. Ma, when that battle will start, I will be the lion. Uh -huh. Hear me again. In every battle you fight beginning tonight, you will be more than a conqueror. Many of us don't even know who we are. Huh? Let's see the book of John's Gospel, chapter 1. Let's say verse 12. What does it say? As many as received him, Go on. gave him power to become the sons of God. Can all the born again Christians in this room tonight raise your hand? And declare and decree and say, because I have received him, he has given me power to be a child of God, to do what every child of God can do. That for all my enemies, they are in trouble. They are in trouble. Do you know, this man would die when we begin to plan the burial. He woke up again and said, they asked me to name all those I've killed. Who asked you? He said, I hear a voice. I don't know who, that, who had that voice. So said, okay, let me name two more. He will name two more. And then he will, he will relapse again. The elders asked him, are you afraid of death? He said, no, but this boy, see him. His juju was not made on earth. I don't know where he got this type of power. They asked me, Umar, do you have any power? I said, yes, I am not a born again child of God. I am dangerous to every witch and wizard. I know what you do, mama. I'm a boy, I'm a boy. I know what you do, mama. I'm a boy, I'm a boy. I know what you do, mama. I'm a boy, I'm a boy. I know what you do, mama. I'm a boy, I'm a boy. I know what you do, mama. I'm a boy, I'm a boy. I know what you do, mama. I'm a boy, I'm a boy. I know what you do, mama. I'm a boy, I'm a boy. I know what you do, mama. I'm a boy, I'm a boy. I know what you do, mama. I'm a boy, I'm a boy. I know what you do, mama. I'm a boy, I'm a boy. I'm a man of my word. 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 I
to the book of Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3. What does it say, sir? Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3. Therefore with joy shall he drew water out of the well of salvation. Everybody hear me. Anytime Satan tries to make you unhappy and depressed, please find good reasons why you will not get depressed. You'll be losing your destiny in your God. Therefore, refuse to bow. Don't let anything take your joy from you. Or, I don't know, whatever you lose. Let, let's see the book of Job, chapter... Let's see chapter 2, we take verse 10. What does it say? Job 2, verse 10. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of the God and the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. In all this, Job did not sin against God. And yet he lost more people than anyone here had ever lost. It is not what happened to you that matter, but what happened in you because of what happened to you. But most importantly, it is your knowledge of who God is and what God is doing that matters. Let's go back to chapter 1 of the book of Job. Let's take verse 10. What does it say? Job 1.10 Has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side, thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch Set and said to God, if you remove their protection from Job, he will cause, thee he will cause you to your face. face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he had is in thy power, all that he had is thy power. Go, only do whatever you can do. Only upon and himself, put it, not forth thine hand. Don't touch him. So but Satan, he can take everything he has. So Satan went forth from the presence Satan of the Lord. Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Go on. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house. Yes. Then came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and, on, and took them away. Yea, they have slain thy servants and the age of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven, and had burnt up the sheep and the servant, and, and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three How many of you know how many people Job lost in one day? Almost all but one children. But Job said, I came to this world with nothing. And I shall leave this world with what? Nothing. And he did not insult God. Beginning tonight, promise me, no matter what the enemy shall do to you, you will not insult God. How many of you will say, so I promise? So I promise. He lost almost everything a man can lose and refused to insult God. Right where you are this now, whatever will make you unhappy, Whatever has made you unhappy, that thing will cease to exist. Don't let anything take your joy from you. He, God said, the Bible says, I'll fear what? No man. 
For no man will do anything that will hurt me. I want us beginning tonight, whatever the enemy will do to threaten you, just tell Satan, I will never insult God. I came to this world with nothing, and I shall go back to him with what? Nothing. He, he liked it funny. I don't, many, I don't care how many cars you have. The day you die, you will go without any of them. In fact, we will not even allow you to go with money. As we bury you, we keep our eyes on your hand to make sure there is no money there. And if we find money, we shall take that money from you. And nothing will happen. Huh? <laughs> wow. The Bible, the wife, the wife said to Job what? Curse God and die. Now, let's say, read that Bible passage. Where, where Job, did the wife? Job chapter 2, verse 9. Yes. Then said his wife unto him. Then said his wife unto him. Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Do you still retain your integrity? Curse God and die. Curse God and die. But he what said, did Job say? But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all these did not Job sin with his lips. Can you promise me tonight, no matter what the enemy will use to test you, you will not sin against God. Can you raise your hand and say, I so promise. Mighty God. If today, if the enemy had already made you depressed and unhappy, I want you to ask God to forgive you. When you allow the enemy to break your heart and depress you on the outside, you soon begin to suffer real problems on the inside. But today it shall not be. If it has happened, it shall be forgiven. I, I declare today your day of new beginning. What? Your day of new beginning. Can you raise your hand and say, in every battle I fight, I shall be more than a conqueror. Wow. How many of you came to this world with a child? Anybody? Say something, let me hear. <laughs> I, I lost four people in one day. And it was in my attempt to save my wife that I lost those four people. And I had said to God, the day Satan came to my house and said to me, Ma, when I'm through with you, you'll be crawling and begging me to leave you. And I said it will never happen. He said, I've been told you're the stubborn man, but I already deal with you. <laughs> oh God, you... Let, let me be correct you. You are not Satan. Your name is Fallen Angel Satan. He asked me, what did you say? I said, your name is Fallen Angel Satan. You are not Satan. You are a Fallen Angel Satan. He said, don't worry. The battle will soon start. I, I reminded him that God told me to do only for one day. Only one day that God will not answer my prayer. So that battle will not last long, only one day. And I already, I've already survived you. <laughs> I lost eight printing machines in one day. I lost three jeeps in one day. I lost four children in one day. And I still drove from Uyo to Lagos to preach that day. In that battle you have, a, a, you have against Satan, I want to declare you tonight more than a conqueror. You will be more than a conqueror. You will be more than a conqueror. And amazingly, everything we lost that day, God has replaced all of them. Do you 
Jesus said, "The Emmanuel." I'm a man, man, be sang a yeye. I can a man, any day I can do. I'm a man, man, be sang a yeye. Hallelujah. Jesus said, "The Emmanuel." Chapter 8, verse 10. Wonderful God. Yes, sir. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry for the joy Nehemiah, of... Wait, Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. Is that what you're reading? Yes, sir. Go on. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Does that, does that mean anything to you? When everything Satan will do to make you happy fails, you find that the joy of the Lord is what? The joy of the Lord is what? Therefore, don't let the enemy depress you. Don't let him make you unhappy. Don't let him say you have already lost the battle. Because this God will never leave you nor forsake you. Let's see the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 through 10. Remember, you are promising God tonight that nothing will make you unhappy. Nothing will make you unhappy. You know, I have said from here repeatedly, it is not what anybody says about you that matters, but your own opinion of what was said. If I call you an idiot, don't get angry because there are so many idiots that God created. You're only one of them. Huh? Yes. Don't fight over that. The, I don't know if, if you have ever said to anybody, you are not good enough to be my enemy. <laughs> I said it to a man and he began to cry. Yes, you mean I'm not good enough to, hey, only tough men can be my enemies. You are not. Read on, sir. Hebrew 13 from verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Stop comparing yourself with others. And be content. A man may have more cars than you today, but tomorrow will bring you more cars than he has. Is that true? Yes, sir. Tomorrow will bring you better news. <laughs> Is there nobody who was, who had maybe a car when you had none last year? 
and now you have one, and you have more than one, and you have more than he now has. Is that not the law of life? Yes. A man may have nothing today, but tomorrow God will prosper him. How many of you believe it is it shall be so in your life? You may have nothing today, but tomorrow this God will prosper you. If you believe it is so, shout hallelujah two times. Hallelujah. I want you to hear me. That sickness that attacked you shall not destroy you. That you're sick today does not mean you die of that sickness. Every problem has a time limit. No, your problem. Can you announce and say, My problem has time limit? No, stand up and tell three persons and say, My problem today has. Let's see the book of Proverbs chapter 24 and we take verse 5. We write down these Bible passages. Yes. Proverbs 24 verse 5. A wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. What you have heard tonight will help increase your knowledge. This God, men and brethren, is a mighty God. He will continue to teach us until we become more than conquerors. Can we see the book of First Peter, chapter 1, verse 8? First Peter 1, 8. Whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. What does that mean? Every born again child of God within the reach of my voice, you have been registered to do exploits in this life. No, did you hear me? Everyone who is born again in this house you have been registered by God to do exploits. And therefore, beginning tonight, you will do what others cannot do. How many of you believe it shall be so? No, tell somebody it shall be so. Let's go to the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, we take 17 through 19. And then we'll go to Romans, chapter 17, verse 17. Yes, sir. Habakkuk 3, from 17. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, Good. neither shall further, neither shall further, Fruits be in the vines. Yes. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Can somebody say that? Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Say it, I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. That is, even when things are difficult for you, God expects you to rejoice in the God of your salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hind's feet, and he will make me to walk upon my high places. To walk upon mine high places. That is, even if you have been married but you don't have a child yet, one day you have children. Yeah. Am I speaking to anybody here? Yeah. If you are the woman, stand up. You have been expecting children. 
to come your way and you don't have any, can you now say to God, I still believe one day I'll have more than I expected to have? How many of you are standing to say what I've asked you to say? Only two of you. How many of three of you? Four of you? Huh? Ten. Wow. The joy of the Lord shall be your strength. Those who believe in shout hallelujah three times. It is not what happens today that matters, but what God will do tomorrow that matters. Those who are laughing at you, they will regret laughing at you. But a day will come that every year God will give you a child. And you'll be tired of having children. <laughs> Can you raise your hand and shout hallelujah? I want those who said to God tonight, even when the battle of my life is tough, you remain the reason why I will sing and dance. For you never leave me nor forsake me. How many of you believe that this God will never leave you nor forsake you? Then stand up and say to God, if I have grumbled before, forgive me. If I have murmured, forgive me. Tonight I promise, no matter what I'm going through, I shall still love you. I will pant after you, I will pine after you, I will crave after you. I know you will never leave me nor forsake me. Therefore, in every battle of life, I am already more than a conqueror. I will win in every battle. I will love you above everything else in life. I will love you with all my heart. I will love you despite the crisis I face. I will love you. And Father, give me strength to love you always. Give me energy. Give me wisdom. Help me, dear Lord. I want to know those that this message has encouraged and they feel strengthened and they feel happy and they know that it's not what happens today that matters but all that God has for me is what is important. This God will never forsake you. He will never abandon you. He said he will never leave you nor forsake you. Those who believe it shall be so. Raise up your hand. Father, I demand everyone who has raised his or her hand, let a miracle of restoration start in his or her life. <laughs> Father, may they never run away from you. May they love you and love you always. Despite whatever the enemy shall do, may they love you always. I therefore ask, dear Lord, make everyone more than a conqueror. Let them say to Satan, no matter how many stones you throw at me, none shall stop me. Amen. Beginning tonight, every stone the enemy shall throw at you shall become your stepping stone to greatness. Amen. You know the heart Peter, I mean, they had Paul and Silas beaten, but they had a song. <laughs> I am still amazed that this man could be beaten so badly, and he had a song. The Bible says he was beaten to death, almost to death, but he bounced back and sang on and danced before his God and Mecca. You are promising me no matter what the enemy shall do to you, you still love God. Those who so promise, raise your hand and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Father, I ask that you stand be beside everyone here. 
In every battle, they will never fight. May they be more than conquerors. I declare each one unstoppable. Satan will never stop you. He will never defeat you. He will never overcome you. Father, Father, let everything work for the good of your children. And let the miracle start this night. The name of the Father and of the Son. You will never be discouraged again. And tonight, your sleep shall be healing sleep. Tonight shall be the beginning of your recovery. Therefore, go in peace. Let this God bless you and, re and, and promote you and fight your every battle. It shall be so. In the name of the Father and of the Son. Nothing will force you to get depressed again. If the enemy shall knock you down 20 times, you will bounce back 20 times. It shall be so. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. I want to get this assurance one more from you, one more time from you. How many of you will promise God and promise me that in everything Satan will do to discourage you, you will refuse to be discouraged. You will love this God, you will serve this God. You will wake up every morning with songs that call for a good dance. And say to God, I will always love you. Father, as many hands as are up, let the reward begin this night. Let them be encouraged. Whisper to them and say to them, you have already overcome the enemy. And may they be more than conquerors. Make this year the greatest year in life. Yeah. Father, whatever the enemy had taken from them is already returned. Yeah. Therefore, let them rejoice. Let them be happy. Yeah. Let them celebrate you. Yeah. Thank you for hearing me. For I ask in Jesus' name. I hear we have three children for dedication. Can the elders come with the children and come quickly, please? Others can sit down. Jesus said, Dear Mammy, I'm a mamma in this song, I hear you. I can't know. Any came you. I'm in my mind, this song, Hallelujah. Oh, I'm in my mind, this song, yeah. I can't even be a game. I'm in my mind, this song, yeah. This was a dear, my I'm in my mind, this song, yeah.
bless them with your child. Leave your seats and come forward here. I will not uh, announce your name, but I'm going to pray for you. We have a card to dedicate here. If you're a member of this fellowship and there is no car in your garage, can you come forward? I'm going to ask God to add speed to your prayer. Come. I didn't say you should make noise. We are in the presence of the Lord. Let's honor him. How many children do we have? How many children are here for dedication? Three. Three. Can you please stand where we can see you very well? Madam Omar, can you come and carry one of the children? Professor uh, Fabio, can you carry the second person? Uh, who? Caris. Huh? Uh, Pastor Caris, can you come and carry the third child? Let the parents tell you the name of each child. You announce that to us. Of the three children, how many are girls? All of them? Huh? Huh? Two girls and one boy. So we the men lost the election. Next time will be our return match. Can we hear the name of the first child? Praise God. Her name is Ozana. Chino Yerem Okono. Ozana. Chino Yerem Okono. Okay, second child. Praise the Lord. Her name is Precious Chemerie Joseph. Precious. Chemerie. Chemerie. Uh, Chemerie Joseph. Chemerie. Yes. Wow. Huh? God has okay the last child praise God the name of our baby is Chukwe Buka good news Eze Chukwe Buka good news Eze what's the right name Chukwe Buka good news Eze all that Chukwe Buka good news Eze Father, I present these beautiful children to you. Having been brought to your altar and to your house, they will not be ordinary children. Amen. Let there be a mark placed upon their, their heads to show that these children are not ordinary children again. Amen. Wherever they will ever go, may they find favor. Favor in your sight. Favor in the sight of men who matter. Favor in the sight of those who can help them. Father, bless them with good health. May they live long. Bless them with financial surplus supplies. These children shall take care of their parents. 
they'll have more than enough for their parents. And Father, every stone the enemy shall throw at them shall become the stepping stone to 